How's it going? So, today I have something pretty special. I was just recently away on a surf trip, and I came home in the middle of the night, and was walking through the house, and all of a sudden I saw something on the floor, and I said, what, what is that? Why, why are my guitars out, you know, in the living room? Turns out my dad had come by a pretty special find, and so I turned the lights on in the living room, and I looked, and there was a Fender case on the floor that I had never seen before, and I said, wait a minute, something's wrong here. And so what my dad had done is he had found a super deal on a uh, guitar that needed some love. And he found this Fender Bullet One uh, guitar. And it, which is super cool, but needs a lot of work. Uh, if you can see the, the for everything on this guitar needs help. The, there's a lot of really nasty stuff all over the body. There's little nicks and dings everywhere. The frets, the frets need polishing. There's some kind of weird, looks like a weird liquid that got dripped all over the fretboard. The tuners actually feel pretty smooth at the moment, um, which is good, uh, but those can be lubricated. And uh, the nut is actually broken on the, on the low E string, which you can see there. So either I need to rebuild that or get a new nut. Um, of course, the whole back of it is, you know, covered in, I don't know, grime and, and everything. And so uh, it even has a little engraving on the, the fender back plate here. It says Randy. It's also missing saddles, so it needs some new saddles. But the cool thing about this guitar is that the pick guard and the bridge are one piece. So it's a, it's a metal pick guard, which is really, really interesting. I've never seen that before on an instrument. The body is definitely nitro. There's a bunch of checking on there, which looks really nice, um, except, you know, it's behind a bunch of grime and funk and dirt and stuff. So I'm gonna try to carefully polish this. You can see on the, somebody's been putting on, on the floor in their garage or something, it's kind of nasty on the bottom here. This guitar, from what I can tell, is from 1982, and I guess that's when Randy must have picked it up, and uh, and uh, it was in a lot better shape than it is now, but hopefully I can get this restored and, uh, and get it playing again, because I really love to see how this sounds and feels and everything. So yeah, I hope you'll enjoy my attempt here at bringing this guitar kind of back to life and back into playing condition. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy. Even the case needs a lot of work. The uh, pin for one of the hinges is missing so the case doesn't close all the way in the back. Um, there's all kinds of like nasty stuff in there, dirt, grime. There's like bugs, dead bugs in there. So the case smells terrible. Um, hopefully I'll be able to clean that thoroughly enough to get all the smells out and everything and make it look really nice. Um, it's obvious it's, it's been sitting in a garage somewhere forever or like, you know, storage or, you know, somebody's attic, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, hopefully that'll all, uh, get nice and cleaned up because it was pretty repulsive to open the case for the first time actually was uh and still still kind of is uh you know you get in there take the guitar out close the case real quick so that you don't get a big whiff of that uh stuff i guess it's maybe it's a mixture of everything i just talked about but it's not a pleasant smell and i'm hoping to get some of the color off of this neck pickup i don't know what happened but it looks like somebody drew on it with crayon or something or maybe they used a green guitar pick and hit the hit the pickup cover, but it doesn't look very nice, and so I'm gonna try to fix that. And I don't even know if this thing works. I haven't even plugged it in yet, so that will that may be an exciting adventure when we get to that as well. Um, the knobs feel okay. Hopefully there's no problems, and really, I mean, it's a potentiometer. It really should last pretty well. I've got a few options for how to rebuild the nut. 
Um, and I'm thinking it may not be too, too hard to just find some bone and, uh, and do the old bone and super glue trick because as it is right now, I don't think a string is going to be able to sit there and not pop out. It may sit there for a second, but there's no way when you're playing it's not just going to slide out immediately. And the frets are all like another level of tarnished. It's not like, you know, you've had a guitar sitting out for, you know, a few months and the, the frets stop being shiny. I mean, this is serious corrosion. You, you can tell that the nickel in the frets is oxidized. You can see the green on the frets. Um, so I'm gonna have to actually put a decent amount of work into, into getting the frets polished up. <laughs> well, anyway, while we watch this monkey work, I figured uh, I'd go through a little bit of the history behind the, the Fender Bullet. Um, so initially, it was designed to be a Korean import guitar, but it was quickly apparent that they had a lot of unacceptable problems. And so they recalled the guitars to the US, and then they started to manufacture them at the Fullerton plant. And that's basically, in 1981, where they had two models, the Bullet One and the Bullet One Deluxe. And so the Bullet One had this uh, cost-saving steel pick guard bridge combo, and the Bullet One Deluxe had a three-ply plastic uh, pick guard and steel bridge. Originally, the lower end model retailed at $200 or $250 if you wanted a case. Both of those models had two single coil pickups and looked very much like the guitar in this video. The main difference between those guitars and this one is that in the later models they switched from the rosewood fretboard to a maple fretboard or a solid maple neck. But then in 1983 they stopped producing it in the United States, I'm assuming it wasn't cost effective, because they moved production to Japan and started producing the bullets under the Squire name. This pickup cover, I think I may have shown it previously, but it had like green pigment over it and then maybe like a brown patch. And so I rubbed it with this uh, this 2000 grit fret eraser, which is used for polishing frets. Um, and it took that stuff straight off and now it looks nice and clean. Of course it looks yellow if you look at the, the bottom of the pickup compared to the top, but you know. It's vintage, so yeah. It looks like whoever put these pickups in put the springs between the cover and the pickup, which is not where it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna have to redo that. And while I have this off, I'm gonna go ahead and deoxidize all the pots, clean everything, make sure like the wires aren't being smashed under the pot, which is that one is. I think there's another wire somewhere. I saw one on this side. That wire was kind of smashed into the potentiometer too. Let's see if I can't clean up the switch and get it moving a little bit better. The whole point of that spring right there is to have it between the pickup cover and the pick guard so that you can kind of see like how how close the coils are to the strings. Which means with the spring where it is now, you have no idea how high your pickup actually is.
Yep. Now the switch is all lubed up. It feels really, really, really good. Super even. There's a little ball in there that rolls between positions. So basically, you know, first position, second position, third position, and you can, you're kind of moving. Really, it's like this, where the switch is moving across the ball. What's well, on the it's on the inside of like a semicircle, but basically it's just moving like between each position like that. And so it was kind of stuck in one position. I put a little bit of oil in there. And then now all that feels really smooth because the thing is it would get kind of stuck in the first position really hard to move out of first position, but now each click is really nice and even. So the, the old saddles were kind of an issue because uh, they were old and the set screws didn't work to raise and lower that the height of the saddles but most importantly there were saddles missing so i needed uh, to get some new ones anyway so i went ahead and got some brass ones when i checked the price of saddles they're basically the same as buying the whole bridge assembly so i just went ahead and bought the whole thing all right so to help me out here I have this uh, advanced organic chemistry book. I'm gonna put that on this the bridge here so it doesn't move around while I undo the screws. It's about as that's about as much use as I'm getting out of my chemistry background these days.